the frog. To pay her back for the glass eye in his beer, Mr. Twit decided he would put a frog in Mrs. Twit's bed. He caught a big one down by the pond and carried it back secretly in a box. That night, when Mrs. Twit was in the bathroom getting ready for bed, Mr. Twit slipped the frog between her sheets. Then he got into his own bed and waited for the fun to begin. Mrs. Twit came back and climbed into her bed and put out the light. She lay there in the dark, scratching her tummy. Her tummy was itching. Dirty old hags like her always have itchy tummies. Then all at once, she felt something cold and slimy crawling all over her feet. She screamed. What's the matter with you? Mr. Twit said. Help! screamed Mrs. Twit, bouncing about. There's something in my bed. I'll bet it's that giant skilly wiggler I saw on the floor just now, Mr. Twit said. That what? screamed Mrs. Twit. I tried to kill it, but it got away, Mr. Twit said. It's got teeth like screwdrivers. Help! screamed Mrs. Twit. Save me! It's all over my feet. It'll bite off your toes, said Mr. Twit. Mrs. Twit fainted. Mr. Twit got out of bed and fetched a jug of cold water. He poured the water over Mrs. Twit's head to revive her. The frog crawled up from under the sheets to get near the water. It started jumping about on the pillow. Frogs love water. This one was having a good time. When Mrs. Twit came to, the frog had jumped on her face. This is not a nice thing to happen to anyone in bed at night. She screamed again. By golly, it is a giant skilly wiggler, Mr. Twit said. It'll bite off your nose. Mrs. Twit leapt out of bed and flew downstairs and spent the night on the sofa. The frog went to sleep on her pillow. The wormy spaghetti. The next day, to pay Mr. Twit back for the frog trick, Mrs. Twit sneaked out into the garden and dug up some worms. She chose big long ones and put them in a tin and carried the tin back to the house under her apron. At one o'clock, she cooked spaghetti for lunch and she mixed the worms in with the spaghetti, but only on her husband's plate. The worms didn't show because everything was covered with tomato sauce and sprinkled with cheese. Hey, my spaghetti's moving, cried Mr. Twit, poking around in it with his fork. It's a new kind. Mrs. Twit said, taking a mouthful from her own plate, which, of course, had no worms. It's called squiggly spaghetti. It's delicious. Eat it up while it's nice and hot. Mr. Twit started eating, twisting the long tomato-covered strings around his fork and shoveling them into his mouth. Soon there was no tomato sauce. Sorry, soon there was tomato sauce all over his hairy chin. It's not as good as the ordinary kind, he said. Taking, talking with his mouthful. It's too squishy. I find it very tasty, Mrs. Twit said. She was watching him from the other end of the table. It gave her great pleasure to watch him eating worms. I find it rather bitter, Mr. Twit said. It's got a distinctly bitter flavour. Buy the other kind next time. Mrs. Twit waited until Mr. Twit had eaten the whole plateful. And then she said, You want to know why your spaghetti was so squishy? Mr. Twit wiped the tomato sauce from his beard <clears throat> with a corner of the tablecloth. Why? he said. And why it had a nasty, bitter taste? Why? he said. Because it was worms, cried Mrs. Twit, clapping her hands and stamping her feet on the floor and rocking with horrible laughter. The funny walking stick. To pay Mrs. Twit back for the worms in his spaghetti, Mr. Twit thought up a really clever, nasty trick. One night, when the old woman was asleep, he crept out of bed and took her walking stick downstairs to his work shed. There he stuck a tiny round piece of wood, no thicker than a penny, onto the bottom of the stick. This made the stick longer. But the difference was so small, the next morning Mrs. Twit didn't notice it. The following night, Mr. Twit stuck another tiny bit of wood on. Every night he crept downstairs and added an extra tiny thickness of wood to the end of the walking stick. He did it very neatly so that the extra bits looked like a part of the old stick. Gradually, but oh so gradually, 
Mrs. Tweet's walking stick was getting longer and longer. Now, when something's growing very slowly, it's almost impossible to notice it happening. You yourself, for example, are actually growing taller every day that goes by, but you wouldn't think it, would you? It's happening so slowly, you can't even notice it from one week to the next. It was the same with Mrs. Tweet's walking stick. It was all so slow and gradual that she didn't notice how long it was getting even when it was halfway up to her shoulder. That stick's too long for you, Mr. Twit said to her one day. Why, so it is, Mrs. Twit said, looking at the stick. I've had a feeling there was something wrong, but I couldn't for the life of me think of what it was. There's something wrong, all right, Mr. Twit said, beginning to enjoy himself. What can have happened, Mrs. Twit said, staring at her old walking stick. It must have suddenly grown longer. Don't be a fool, Mr. Twit said. How can a walking stick possibly grow longer? It's made of dead wood, isn't it? Dead wood can't grow. Then what on earth has happened? cried Mrs. Twit. It's not the stick, it's you, said Mr. Twit, grinning. It's you that's getting shorter. I've been noticing it for some time now. That's not true, cried Mrs. Twit. Uh, You're just, shrinking, woman, he just, he just, said Mr. Twit. It's tricking. not possible. He's just tricking. It's just tricking. Oh, yes, it jolly well is, said Mr. Twit. You're shrinking fast. You're shrinking dangerously fast. Why, you must have shrunk at least a foot in the last few days. Never, she cried. Of course you have. Take a look at your stick, you old goat, and see how much you've shrunk in comparison. You've got the shrinks. That's what you've got. You've got the dreaded shrinks. Mrs. Tweet began to feel so trembly, she had to sit down. Mrs. Tweet has the shrinks. As soon as Mrs. Tweet sat down, Mr. Tweet pointed out at her and shouted, There you are. You're sitting in your old chair and you've shrunk so much, your feet aren't even touching the ground. Mrs. Tweet looked down at her feet and by golly, the man was right. Her feet were not touching the ground. Mr. Twit, you see, had been just as clever with the chair as he'd been with the walking stick. Every night when he'd gone downstairs and stuck a little bit extra onto the stick, he'd done the same with the four legs of Mrs. Twit's chair. Just look at you sitting there in your same old chair, he cried, and you've shrunk so much, your feet are dangling in the air. Mrs. Twit went white with fear. You've got the shrinks, cried Mr. Swit. Twit pointing his finger at her like a pistol. You've got them badly. You've got the most terrible case of shrinks I've ever seen. Mrs. Twit became so frightened she began to dribble. But Mr. Twit, still remembering the worms in his spaghetti, didn't feel sorry for her at all. I suppose you know what happens to you when you get the shrinks, he said. What? gasped Mrs. Twit. What happens? Your head shrinks into your body and your body shrinks into your legs and your legs shrink into your feet and in the end there's nothing left except a pair of shoes and a bunch of old clothes i can't bear it cried mrs twit it's a terrible disease said mr twit the worst in the world how long have i got cried mrs twit how long before i finish up as a bundle of old clothes and a pair of shoes mr twit put on a very solemn face At the rate you're going, he said, shaking his head sadly, I'd say not more than 10 or 11 days. But isn't there anything we can do? Cried Mrs. Twit. There's only one cure for the shrinks, said Mr. Twit. Tell me, she cried. Oh, please tell me quickly. We'll have to hurry, said Mr. Twit. I'm ready. I'll hurry. I'll do anything you say, cried Mrs. Twit. You won't last long if you don't said Mr. Twit, giving her another grisly grin. What is it that I must do? cried Mrs. Twit, clutching her cheeks. You've got to be stretched, said Mr. Twit. 